Today, I'm making a 10 minute vegan breakfast sandwich and then a one hour breakfast sandwich to contrast and compare and see which one is the better option. So for the 10 minute version, I'm gonna make a quick and easy McMuffin style sandwich that I've actually been hyper focused on for a few months now. I whip this up like two or three times a week since it's so dang quick and easy and it hits the spot. It's really as simple as getting some English muffins, and yes, most are vegan in the US, just avoid the Thomas brand and check the ingredients of course, but we're gonna fire up a pan and throw them in there to toast, and while the pan gets up to heat and toast our muffins, we're gonna prepare our tofu egg patty. I always like using super firm tofu since it doesn't need pressing, and I'm just gonna slice it into fillets, and then using a cookie cutter, I'm gonna cut out some patties like so, and you can use the scraps in another dish or a tofu scramble. And for the meat, you can really use whatever you like, but I typically will use this tempeh bacon. You could also use some avocado or tomato, literally whatever you want. By this time, the muffins should be lightly toasted, so I'm gonna go ahead and set those aside and then add a little oil and our tempeh bacon along with our tofu patty. And you can season your tofu patty with whatever floats your boat, but I'm gonna add some nooch as my patty scooches away to ruin the shot. And next, some adobo seasoning. If you can't find this stuff, I have a recipe to make some at home, but again, use whatever you like to season it as well. I'm simply gonna grill the tempeh and tofu for about two to three minutes and then give them a flip once they got some nice browning on them. And then I'm gonna add half a slice of vegan cheese to the tofu patty, which is totally optional, of course. I'm gonna cover and steam the cheese to melt it for about 20 seconds or so. And then lastly, for a little eggy flavor, I'm gonna add some black salt on top. And I recommend doing this after it's done cooking as the black salt will lose its eggy flavor if you cook it for too long. Now to build the sandwich, I'm gonna start off with a sriracha foundation, but use whatever condiment you like. And then the cheesy tofu patty and the tempeh bacon and a schmear of vegan mayo on the top muffin. Slap that together and this thing totally hits the spot for a quick and easy breakfast. I honestly eat two of them usually and I won't be hungry for hours. So for the time and effort, you really can't beat this breakfast sandwich in my book. Then again, is putting in an hour of work worth it for this sandwich? Here we got a vegan steak, egg, and cheese with a chimichurri sauce, so let's put that together and see how it stacks up. And first, let's make the chimichurri, and there are many ways to make a chimichurri, and I'm not claiming this to be super authentic, it's just how I like to make it. I do recommend getting a good olive oil, and thanks to today's sponsor, Graza, I have exactly that on hand. Now, I usually use neutral flavored oils when I cook, but that may change since I've been using these the past few weeks. They have two kinds of olive oils, sizzle, which is geared towards cooking, while drizzle is a finishing oil that has a stronger flavor and is perfect for drizzling, of course. And for the price, you really can't beat the quality of Graza. They are never blended, and the Pequot olives are sourced from a single origin in Spain. They also come in these super convenient squeeze bottles, which if you know me, you know I love a good squeeze bottle. They are also opaque to keep the oil from oxidizing as well. But all of that is really the cherry on top. The main thing that won me over is simply the robust and punchy flavor that these olive oils bring. They perfectly complement any veggies you might want to grill, and as you can see, I'm perfectly fine just dipping some bread in it. So if you're interested in amping up the flavor in your dishes, check the description and use the code THEBURGERDUDE for $5 off your first order of sizzle and drizzle, and thank you Graza for sponsoring this video. Now, to make the chimichurri, I'm gonna finely chop up some fresh Italian parsley, about 35 grams worth, or if you don't have a scale, once it's all chopped up, it should be about a half cup. Then I'm gonna dice up half of a Fresno pepper, or any red pepper will do. You can also skip the pepper and use some red pepper flakes, or you can be like me and use both. Next, we're gonna mince up about six cloves of garlic, add more if you want it even more garlicky, of course. And then we're gonna do a teaspoon of dried oregano, the red pepper flakes, about a half teaspoon of those, three tablespoons of red wine vinegar, and then half a cup of the drizzle olive oil. Salt and black pepper to taste, and then just whisk that up until combined. Taste and adjust for seasoning as always, and now you have a most herbaceous chimichurri that you can use on just about anything. Let it hang out while we prepare the rest of the sandwich, but you will wanna refrigerate it once you are done eating. Speaking of which, the oil will harden like this after it's been in the fridge, but just let it sit at room temperature for about an hour or so until it's back to its former glory. And now for the steak, I'm using my good buddy soy curls as I often do. I'm gonna be making my soy curl steak recipe, but adding some more seasonings to amp up the flavor a bit. But before that, we need to rehydrate the soy curls in some water for about 10 minutes. So while that rehydrates, let's whip up the marinade. And for that, we're gonna start off with two cups of vegan beef or veggie broth, one tablespoon of Worcestershire, and yes, this one is vegan. Just check the ingredients on yours and make sure that there's no anchovies in it. But most what's this here sauce is vegan in my experience. 
And then two tablespoons of mushroom seasoning or two teaspoons of miso paste, either one will work great. Optionally, for some color, you can use one to two tablespoons of Gravy Master or Kitchen Bouquet. Now you could stop here and this will be a tasty marinade, but I'm gonna add in some more flavors. First, I'm gonna do a quarter cup of orange juice, the juice of one lime, half a teaspoon each of cumin, onion, and garlic powder, one teaspoon of dried oregano, and then two tablespoons of olive oil. Whisk that up and by that time, our soy curls should be rehydrated. Next, we need to drain them and then squeeze out the water. And the reason I don't rehydrate the soy curls in the marinade is because I find that they have a funky aftertaste. So by using water and squeezing them, we get rid of that aftertaste. And as you can see, we squeezed out quite a bit of that funky tasting water right there. So go ahead and dump that out. And now let's get our drained and squeezed soy curls and add them to a pan over medium heat and toast them for a couple minutes just to dry them out further. Then we're gonna pour in that marinade and let those reduce until all of the liquid has been absorbed. This should take about 15 to 20 minutes. And you can either sit there and watch it reduce or if you wanna make this sandwich even faster in another pan, you can make the tofu scramble. Of course, you could just use something like Just Egg for an even quicker option and I'll be honest, I usually will if I have some on hand. And in fact, I made a version of the sandwich with some Just Egg just because it's more photogenic and I'm, I'm very superficial when it comes to the appearance of my sandwiches. But for a tofu scramble, we simply need to crumble up a block of super firm tofu directly into a pan over medium heat. For seasoning, I'm gonna use one to three teaspoons of adobo, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast, a half teaspoon of turmeric, and then I personally like adding in some unsweetened plant milk, about a quarter to a half cup, and this all depends on your preference. My wife actually prefers her tofu scramble a bit crumbly, whereas I like mine to be a bit more like this. In fact, I also like to add about a half cup of vegan cream cheese to make it even more decadent and to infuse some much needed fat, at least in my book. Obviously this is optional, but it really makes the tofu scramble that much more delicious. By this time, our soy curl steak has fully absorbed all of that beefy vegan juice, so all we need to do is plate up this sandwich. But since I have about 10 more minutes to make it, I'm gonna add a few more accoutrements. Now my wife really can't eat onions and I like having onions with my steak sandwiches, so I'm gonna grill some up and then I'm gonna toss some of the soy curl steak in and mix that up, then toss on a slice of vegan cheese and cover to steam and melt. For the bread, we can do ciabatta or a bagel, whatever you like, just make sure you toast or grill it until golden brown. And to build, I'm gonna add a little vegan mayo to the bottom, then our steak and tofu scramble, and then to top it off with that chimichurri sauce, of course. And I mean, flavor-wise, this tastes more like a sandwich that took an hour to make versus the 10-minute sandwich. Like, it literally has six times the flavor, but it also takes six times as long to make. So which one is better, all things considered? Well, I would say that the 10-minute sandwich is a perfect weekday meal, and this one might be more of a weekend meal. Here's the thing though, if you're cooking for one or two people like I am, you're gonna have plenty of leftovers to heat up and make one of these sandwiches in less than 10 minutes for the rest of the week. So if we take that into consideration, the one hour sandwich wins hands down. Otherwise, I say it's a draw. But let me know what you think. Which one of these do you think you're more likely to make or what changes would you make to either of them? And if you wanna check out some other vegan breakfast ideas, check out this playlist right here. And until then, I'll see you all next time.